Get ready for another episode of Licky Tim Exploitation! What? That's not the name of the show. I know, but when I type really fast on my phone, that's what it usually says. Licky Tim Exploitation. <laughs> Welcome to Licky Tim. Y- you Lucky know, Time Explosion. This is yeah. a podcast uh, ostensibly about art. Mostly. Mostly about art. We're artists. I'm a virtual reality painter, a gallerist, and a curator. Morgan's also a curator and a collage a artist. Yes, I am. I and, am. And speaking of curation, we have a show here at Solis Studio uh, going on right now for the next week, until Friday at least. Uh, Akeem Duncan of Quiet Lunch Magazine has curated the second half of Four Women, uh, a show for International Women's Month featuring four extremely talented painters, sculptors, other artists, and we sold last night. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. But let's let's show a few of the pieces because they are very impressive. Oh, I yeah, must sure. Say. They're, Definitely. They're absolutely beautiful. Right now behind us, we are showing you some of the works that are up on our wall. When is it going to be up till? This is up till this Friday. This Friday. So there's yeah. only a small amount of time for you to get over here, check out the work before it comes down. And let me tell you, you want to see this show. You want to get over here. You want to get your eyes <laughs> open like this. Ah! <laughs> and stare at the work because it's beautiful. Um, and there's some real good deals here. I'm yeah. not going to go into it, but uh, you should take a look. This one's huge. That's gigantic yep. and beautiful. Only 900. What a steal. Yeah, they used to call me in preschool, they used to call me gigantic and beautiful. I never knew why. <laughs> it was a weird situation. I go home. That's and a weird like, thing to call you. Yeah, I mean, the teachers had a thing. And um, obviously, you know, my mom used to dress me in very tight clothing. So there was a problem. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, so. Anyway, this welcome. Is Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. It's hump um, day again. It's hump day. Thank God for that because I'm looking the hump. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly my pillow. Um, now. What day is it? We always have to. I have to check in with Morgan to know what stupid yeah, day it is. There's, what stupid there's a lot holiday. of things going on today. Oh, so Lord. Hit me with them. This is a cute one. It's uh, March 27th. Remember? Uh-huh. Manatee Appreciation Day. They're very Aww. cute. Amanda Wu would love that. I want to hug a manatee. Do you think it would like bite me and like behead me? It was I... actually illegal to touch them. Why? Because they're, they're endangered. So if oh. you go to swim with the manatees, they can like snuggle up on you and rub against you, but you can't touch them back. Sorry to so ruin your weird. dreams. I'm dashing your manatee dream. You are. Okay, so um, <laughs> International Whiskey Day. We ran out, unfortunately, you know, because we, we have shows here at Solas. We have drinks. That's not the main reason why you should come here and see a show. <laughs> but we do. We want to accommodate those who have a fix. You're, you're bitter. Need the fix. But it is International Whiskey Day. So start drinking. Yeah. <laughs> we already did. Just joking. It's no probably mind. after five when you're listening to this now. Okay, this Anything is Anything else coming? What What else? Do you have a good, a good one? I don't it know. It better be a good is. one. Oh, no. Well, I'll explain it. National Acoustic Soul Day. It says, get your guitar and headphones and get ready to celebrate this day of music. Whatever. Interesting. Where is the committee for this? This is out of control. There's we way want too a many. Day. We're going to have to discuss this. You know, maybe yeah. we should have a vote. If you, if, you know what? If you have an idea for a national holiday... Make a comment below for this video. Let us know what you think is important to you, and maybe we'll push for it. We, we'll we'll get some ideas going. You know, we'll fight for the right to party. Maybe fight <laughs> for the right to party. Party day. There's definitely an international party it. day. There is International Collage Day coming up. There We're is. We're excited for that. We're going to be doing some stuff here at Solus with that. We're going to be having a Collage Day event, and then Morgan will be curating a World Collage Day show. I'm an very exhibition. Excited. We're excited about that. A lot of great people. Trying so to get the best night, of the best. Last night was pretty fun, man. It was It was good. You weren't here. That's right. I wasn't here. Uh, I was, cr- again, crying in my bed. I'll just bring up one more day because this is very important. This is National Joe Day. So if you're Joe, oh. you better walk around with a strut and a swagger. Because it's your day, Joe. It's your day. <laughs> it's your day. And, and oh. There's well, no international brand. We are going to get back to the show. But there's there's a few. There's like three more. It's National Viagra Day. So for those who take Lexapro and drink too much and do a lot of cocaine and just can't get it up at the right time, go for Viagra. It's National Viagra Day. <laughs> it is also... Free samples sending in your mailbox. Yes. I, we we <clears throat> want to be sponsored, mostly me, by Viagra. Let's put a Viagra logo up quickly Let's so not. the algorithm shows that <laughs> and they start sending me those little blue pills that i need so badly to find someone to stay with me after one night okay <laughs> it is awesome march 27th quirky 
Country Music Song Titles Day. That is ridiculous. But which is great because we t- spoke about uh, a Jewish cowboy recently named, what's his name again? Oh, Kinky Friedman. Kinky Friedman. Yeah. And doesn't he have a song called Ride Em Jew Boy? Yeah. Kinky Friedman is famously Jewish cowboy from Texas. A lot of people don't think there's a lot of Jews in Texas, but Galveston's a huge center. Really? Uh, yeah. And there's a ton. There's a ton of Jews. Are there there. Hasidics? There? My wife, too. Yeah. Uh, she's she's from Texas and she's Jewish. See, he's he's down with it. You know, well, yeah. I'm a chosen one. She's a chosen one. He just wants to make it good. So when he gets to the pearly gaze, he'll be like, ah, oh, you're well, you're <laughs> no, it's going to be like you're the, with a Jew. You're in. You I know? think it'll be like the South Park episode when everyone gets there and they're like, oh, wait, I was a Jew. I was a Mormon. I was a Christian or, you know, who got it right? And it's the Mormons. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like, oh, Mormons. The correct answer was Mormons. But they can have like tons of lives, right? And they get up there and they all just want to play board games. And chill. I mean, maybe I should switch my religion. It's also <laughs> National Scribble Day. It's also That's National related. Whole Grain Sampling Day. I guess you just, just run around and try freaking grains that you've never... I'm sure most are healthy. Mate. Some may kill you. Here, I don't know. We got to do scribbles for International Scribble Day. Yeah. All right, maybe, here's, here's oh, mine. I wish I had a pad. Oh, no, we got it, one. Here, here's you, mine. This is oh. my scribble. And now you're put your scribble up. Okay. Here. Hold on. Let me make it. <laughs> Ah! Okay, there it is. Wow. That's crazy. Whoa. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I got excited a little bit. <laughs> my head, my, everything fell off. My clothes, everything, my shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. If you haven't seen our last episode, I recommend go check it out with Bread Slug. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Bread Slug's awesome. And they brought Krusty Hole on. That's right. Ugh. Yeah. Well, but I know. Great, I, great names. It is. Unfortunately, well, I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to gross anybody out. I'm sorry. I, I'm giving, I, I apologize, you know. <laughs> oh, go ahead. You, might, you, you opened the Pandora's box now. No, but, um, you know, we, we, uh, we're in this for the long haul. This is episode 23, I believe. Might be 24 even. 24, but we're, we're going to shoot for 2 million. Yeah. Um, so within that time, you know, I still haven't talked about the time that I was kidnapped by a religious fanatic, and we will have that on. We want someone to, to quite possibly suckler to be there when we tell that story. Oh, really? I was going to say you should tell it now. It's a long story, but I feel Why like not? I need I need suckler to be here to yeah. ask me those those really uncomfortable questions. Okay, which is fine. very important. But um, yeah. Uh, well, now that we've disappointed everybody. Uh, well, no, we didn't disappoint <laughs> anybody. Now people are going to want to stay tuned for the future Ooh. story of me getting kidnapped. That was I was like 28 years old. But um, I I don't know if you talked about I I lived with my parents until I was 28 years old. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to Brooklyn in 2007. Mm. But um, I lived on the other side of the house. Um, and my parents smoke weed and watch movies. And so it was, you know, we got along. Not a lot of people could live with their parents, but I happen to have gotten along with my parents. I actually my life. am in the same boat. That's awesome. I lived with my parents. I was like 23, I think 23 or 24. And then I moved to Oakland with a girlfriend and then we moved here to New York. Yeah. Yeah. No, no I mean, there's no reason parents to get cool. along. I mean, I'm lucky for that. They're, they're, they're good yeah. people. My dad is from the Bronx. My mom is from Queens. Yeah. You Both still funny. ended up a tortured artist anyway. Yeah. No, it's the uh, chemical imbalance. Mm. 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 <laughs> well, artists are like H- snowflakes, and there's a million different types. Right. Hence the Lexapro. Hence the need for the Viagra. I see. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. We're gonna have a, an interesting guest on next week, uh, Wednesday of next week. We're gonna have Alex Cherpanova, who's a member here at Solus, uh, a painter, uh, an abstract expressionist painter, and recently has been doing a lot of like sexy nudes. Uh, but I'm excited to probe her brain because she goes out to like Chelsea a lot, which we kind of unfortunately don't do enough of. No, absolutely we're not out there. Not. We're, we're I mean, busy here. I'm either here know. or in my room scheming and making potions. Yeah, plotting and cutting little clips out. Yeah, doing all sorts of strange stuff that I, I sh- probably shouldn't tell on air because they put me away. <laughs> 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 it's about time. Maybe I, maybe I should, but. But uh, this weekend, it's interesting. I don't go too many places, but I am going to Massachusetts to see a friend. Oh. It's going to be interesting. What are you going to do in Massachusetts? Lots of art, hang out, watch movies, do drawings. Who the hell knows? Oh. But um, it's going to be a four and a half hour Mm. bus ride. uh, Yikes, dude. I know, I know. I'm going to I better download some uh, emulators and play some like Earthbound or something. Oh, yeah. That'll keep me busy. I'll keep you busy. I, I had some friends not in Massachusetts, Connecticut, like the farthest I would travel to hang out. Uh, and I had some great friends uh, in this band called Folk Y'all. 
Here, I'll put them up on screen again. Oh, cool. You got to check them out, man. They're from uh, Connecticut, and they were come down and busk in the city here, like uh, uh, Union, not Union Square. Well, sometimes there, but also like St. Mark's doing bluegrass, have their own like big stand up they made with like a weed whacker and a bucket. Nice. Uh, and they're really cool kids. And when I was in a band called the Bushwick Gospel Singers, uh, they discovered us and they invited us to come play at their like compound in Connecticut. That's and cool. And they were super cool. They even like, cause we were a joke gospel band that had like a, a cult attached to it. Right. So they built us like a little entrance. They have this like bridge that goes over almost like a moat to go into the front door oh, i've always wanted us. a moat yeah it was kind of like a moat like sunken in and they uh they built us our own little steeple with our like our cult symbol on the top at a that's cardboard. wild man have you yeah. ever like visited a place that had a moat not a proper moat have you ever had the urge to cross a moat no <laughs> I have. You have? Yeah. You're going to get your ass eaten by alligators, bro. Well, in Ren and Stimpy, uh, the uh, Ren, uh, sorry, the, um, I can't remember which episode, but there was a moat and they had uh, monks, flesh-eating monks in the moat that would eat you. Monks? Robin Hoek. That's the one. Robin Hood. The Robin, it was an earlier episode. What do you mean? They what had flesh-eating flesh eating monks. Monks? Monks, monks are people. Yeah, and they're in this moat and Ren and Stimpy, and if they will eat you. Oh, Ren and Stimpy. Yes, okay, yes, there we yes. go. So I was, was Ren and Stimpy. I'm a they little hung over today, so I got the shades on, and I can't. Yeah, you I don't hard. know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, no, I mean that's 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 a that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So that'll be an interesting weekend, and then um, what are you doing? Uh, have you made any new videos? You know, you never really talked about your awesome TikTok. Oh yeah, I well I've I've been actually I need to get back on it a little bit. I do regular TikTok videos where I just kind of give a piece of art history or talk about something that's on my mind while I'm painting. And you can learn VR. a lot from this man, not that's just from fun. this show, but from his account on TikTok. And what what is it? Uh, it's just TikTok? Wise Carver. It's just my name. This icon, which was drawn by Amanda Wu, who started the whole podcasting thing here when she got her show going. What does it mean with Amanda Wu? We'll leave a drop in a, a link in the description for that. Uh, and she's the reason that we got this equipment, that we were doing this. Thank so, you, Amanda. Amanda's amazing. Check out her. Check out that other podcast, which I'm actually on because I do the news segment with this her. This is true. Yeah. There's like three Brandons. It's crazy. We talk about news, art news, when we can find it. It's been kind of slow going uh, as far as I've seen right now with art news, but... Yeah, and there's I a lot of stuff going on with like Sean P. Diddy Combs, right? Oh, now, right? yeah, he's in the deep poop. I don't groups. know anything about it, what's happening with him. He did the bad things to the nice people. Now oh. he's in big trouble with the wrong people. Man. And they stopped him at the airport and he pooped his pantaloons. What? That's what I think happened. It wasn't written in TMZ, but uh, there oh. I did see, I was, you know, they have all these different shots. You know, everyone takes pictures, they send them to TMZ. I don't know how much money they'll give you for an awesome photo, but I did see a bulge in the back of P. Diddy's pants um, while he was at the airport. And uh, there's only two things that it could be either extreme hemorrhoids and he has to wear a diaper or he pooped his pantaloons. <laughs> You heard it, could it have first. Been a combination. We're we're way worse than TMZ. Oh my god. Yeah, no. No, we are. <laughs> but uh we we were going to have P Diddy on this show, but because of this situation, he was not able to make it today. So that's why we're bringing it up. Rats. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Son of a He backed out on us. Bitch. T Pain too. T Pain. Yeah. Well, I was I was thinking T Pain cuz like last night we were talking with Akeem about it. he's saying that everyone calls him T Pain or thinks he looks like T Pain. Hair, I guess. Well, T Pain named himself because he has, you know, he he has a lot of pain. He's literally in pain. He has uh, scoliosis and um, the gout, uh, what? for lo very long lasting gout. And um, when he started rapping about, you know, his feet and his back, are you uh, being real right now? Totally. No. No. Yes. <laughs> Fact no. check. And so everyone was like, yo, you, you're always rapping about being in pain. You don't feel good all the time. You're depressed. Your first a little name projection. is Thomas. You, you should just go roll with T-Pain. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so we don't, it was. We don't need a fact checker on this show because we can just always assume Morgan's going off. The, the more you end. watch this show, the more truth is going to be revealed to you. You know, you, you're you told all sorts of stuff from the the interweb and the, the lamestream uh, people media. on the flat screen and what people tell you in the streets. 
You don't need them. You need me. You need to watch this show twice as much because right. you need subject matter to talk about. You need to go to every, or your friends and be like, I just watched Lucky Time. They told me about the duty and the, the ditty pants. And now I know why there was a bulge <laughs> in the ditty pants. Oh, my God. So you know what? Sometimes the truth hurts. And sometimes the truth stinks. <laughs> And sometimes our show stinks. <laughs> no way. This is the best one yet. This is the most informative show we've had to date. We've like literally said nothing. We have 14 minutes left. The whole to rock. title of this, the whole title yeah. of this show is the most informative lucky time yet. <laughs> hey, at least we could show off the amazing work of Lalo and talk about Akeem's show. Because I think that that's what's happening. That's where our brains He's have been a budding curator for the he, last few he, days. He yeah. is on fire. Yeah, you know, he, if you haven't checked out his magazine, Quiet Lunch Magazine, that's where you got to start. But he is kind of like uh, curating now more. He's new at it in a way. You know, he's pretty new at actually curating physical shows. Had done a lot of digital curation, which I think is cool because a lot of, um, you know, it's a good place to start doing digital stuff, having a site. And, you know, if it goes well, you can branch off into physical stuff. Have you ever thought of doing um, a virtual gallery? But it would be expensive because everyone would need a uh, headset. But everyone just goes into this room and the walls are blank. And everyone just wears the virtual reality helmet and they're actually together. Well, that's actually, virtually. that exists. That does. And it's here in Brooklyn. Oh. Or, or it was anyway. I'm not, I actually tried looking them up the other day. Somebody tell me if they're gone or if this is still a thing or if it was a fever dream. And I completely hallucinated this. <laughs> but there was a place called... Um, I think it was called the Museum of, it wasn't like, you know, there's the Museum of the Moving Picture or Motion in Picture. Queens? Yeah. There's and a museum if you've of, never been there, that's yeah. probably one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. Yeah, you I will think, see the craziest shit. There. I think it had a name that was similar. It was like the Museum of Future Motion or the Museum of Future something or other. Uh, and it was basically a big room that had a ton of VR headsets on and you would go in there and you would put the headset on. And they had like a VR presentation basically that you would like sit through as like a theatrical or art experience. That's so it really is cool. there. It exists. And pretty soon these headsets are going to be really cheap. Like, cause right now everyone, every, that's the thing that I still hear. How a lot. much are they right now? You can get a brand new factory sealed from the box quest two for 300 bucks. You can that's get a used one for 150. Very affordable. You can get a brand new quest three for 500. Uh, and their prices really, are coming down. Yeah. Well, Meta really did their due diligence in order to try and like monopolize this market. Right. And how much is the, the new Apple had the 3,500, 3,500. Yeah. It's nearly Compared four grand. To, it's four grand with tax basically. And you don't have this. I you're, don't have you're a virtual connoisseur, but would you, I have, the I Pro. mean, that's, that's crazy though, right? That's yeah. too much. Sort of. Yeah. I mean, it's too much, especially for an a first gen Apple product, which is like, if you're a huge Apple fanboy and you want to get in the, you want to have the collector's edition, sure. But because Apple is such a closed ecosystem, the problem right now is that you get your Vision Pro and there's like not much to do with it because they've, they've kind of, they've trying to, they're calling it spatial computing and not VR. And they really mean that because most of what you can do on the Vision Pro right now is iPad apps. They've like making a lot of the, and not all of them are mm. compatible very well. So you can browse the internet, you can watch movies, you can play a few like actual 3D VR AR games. But you know, Apple's infamously terrible with gaming. So there's like not a lot of games. Well, that I you guess can they play didn't team it. up with a lot of third party uh, support. I no, mean, because Meta's been at it for the last like four years, be, right. trying to suck up and become the mono. <laughs> you know, they're trying to cap a monopoly on it. So they right. have all the, all the Quest stores full of stuff. The Steam VR store is even more full of stuff. But the Apple experience is still very much like um, it's like a monitor. It's like it, a very expensive monitor you wear on your face. It happens. I remember <clears throat> going all the way back when uh, CDI, Philips made the CDI. I, I'm pretty sure it was the first um, CD-based video game machine. And uh, they didn't have much third-party support. And they also didn't really have a joystick. It was just a stupid wand with a rotating button thing. And that was really annoying. And then same thing with Turbo Graphics. Yeah. They didn't have much third-party support. And then... The last in my mind would be the Atari Jaguar 64. Oh, I, I don't remember know if you Jaguar. remember that. The yeah, Jaguar yeah. was crazy, man. The the joystick had like 50 buttons. Yeah. It was absolutely ridiculous. Well, I um, think the weird thing about the Apple headset is that it doesn't come with any controllers. 
Like, but that's the whole thing, right? You're just using your hand. You're yeah, going, you're just using your hand and pinching pointing, and stuff. Pinching. But and there touching. are certain things where even with Apple's incredible accuracy, and it works very well for like pinching and clicking and moving a cursor around, like I probably would not be able to do the 3D design I do in Gravity Sketch on a, a Pro unless a Vision Pro, unless I had like some sort of controllers for it. I think you can pair some like maybe you can take like some index valves and pair it with them or something they can have to fix that you know quick. people are hacking it all up but apple's still trying to like you know get their ecosystem together uh and i'm sure it'll work it'll play really nicely with all your other apple products it'll be cool but i think waiting down the line for a few generations is going to be the move and i don't think vr and ar is going to have full acceptance and like a really wide user base like <clears throat> a, the way the cell phones do right until um the glasses come and the thing is, we're real close. <coughs> we're super close. I was watching on YouTube the other night, um, going through all of the glass display technology that's out there for like an act like this pair of glasses having like monitors in them and having like VR stuff in it. That's coming like in the next like 10 years, probably because they already have like heads up displays on these tiny glasses and the app, the uh, meta Ray bands like can. Have like an AI voice assistant. assistant Could I have a sip of your big man? gulp? Yeah, sure. I'm like some coffee. Yeah, you're a little, you're a little parched. A little bit. I'm like yeah. <laughs> about to choke. He's so afraid. Of, he's so afraid of the future, and he's getting dehydrated. But yeah, uh, no, that's what's happening. That's what's going to come. You're going to see like actual Ray-Ban wayfarers that have the full Apple Vision Pro experience in them. Yay! I can't yeah. wait to live a fake ass life. No. I'm just <laughs> No, I think the response to it is really interesting too. Uh, a lot of people are just really against it. What is that video really you showed me? The it. title where the person's going through the um, supermarket and oh, yeah. things are just popping up everywhere. We should play everywhere. a clip of that actually. Here's it's a... insane. So this is supposed to be the future? Is yeah. This... Explain so what this is. This is a, um, let me quickly, just quickly. Super because it's quickly. pretty wild. Like it, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, I just want to find the it's artist's name uh, before I before I put it on here real quick. I'm going to take more of your big gulp. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink all the coffee. Drink all the coffee. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is the artist named Kechi Matsuda. At least that's who has uploaded this one to YouTube. This is a short film called Hyper Reality, and it was made about seven years ago, or at least Holy this video Holy shit. I didn't realize uploaded. it was made seven years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this has been a long oh time. God. I've been showing this to people as like an example of what could be for a long time and this is what the future will might look like could look like will probably look like what do you think do you think this is going to be a good thing or well, this it's like, interesting. does this scare you or do because you excite I, you i feel like if you do have epilepsy this is not good yesterday was it yesterday international epilepsy day i believe it was that's besides the point <laughs> uh-huh yeah how the hell do you deal with that i mean i don't have epilepsy and i'm pretty sure that i would something wrong would happen in my brain if, if i was yeah, I don't know. I wonder if the, I what the numbers are like on epilepsy going up or down. I wonder how, like, if it can be, like, you know, evolved out of us by introducing iPads to children when they're young. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Oh, man. But, I mean, it could be fun. It could be cool. It could be really dark and dystopian. But I mean, I, the only thing that I had handheld back in the day when I was really young were those stupid little Tiger games. Remember? I love Made by those. Tiger. It yeah. was just one color. It was, like, gray on gray. They were monochrome. And they had like the built-in little, like the scene was like built-in. They had in, Ninja Gaiden. In. That was a big deal. They had wrestling, WWF. Yeah. It was awesome. But then, you know, the, the Game Boy came out. But um, I begged my parents to get the Lynx. Mm. You remember the Lynx? Oh, yeah. I remember the Lynx, too. The Lynx was also an Atari product. <clears throat> and it was bigger. It had a bigger screen. I would, Gauntlet was on it. And I was mm. like, oh, my God. Gauntlet. If you remember Gauntlet. Oh, my God. My favorite video. I mean, my first video game system was the Mattel in television. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's the first one I had. I had Pitfall, Baseball, mm, yeah. B-52 Bomber, remember who Burger was in the, Time. Uh, can we talk, can we talk about Burger awesome. Time? But do you remember who was in the um, the commercial for uh, Jungle Hunt? No. Jack Black. Oh. Yeah, young Jack Black was in the uh, original oh, as a commercial. Kid? Yeah, with that's the hat, cool. with the safari hat and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been around. He's been around. No, all that can... was a great game. I love that game. My, my first system was the Atari 800. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. My first machine was the Vectrex. Vectrex. The Vectrex, which unfortunately someone at uh, Galleria Mall in Middletown convinced my dad from the uh, electronics boutique to sell him the freaking Vectrex, which he never had because it's worth so much. Basically, it's just a monitor with 
a joystick attached to it. Right. And it was linear, gra it was just the like line graphics, that's it. Yeah. And each game would come with a plastic thing that you would put into the screen to fit into the screen to give it color. Oh, cool. Like and, a little insert. Yeah. No, though, that, that, if you've never heard of that, the Vectrex, look That's it up. Cool. It's a very cool old school. We'll show that quickly. Mm. I don't want to do that to you with all the green screen. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this will take me 200 years to well, add hey, all these images. We're making the up for our, our lack of, with a guest with a lot of cool visuals for you and tangents, including that reminds me of the paint box stuff that Adrian's been doing. You remember that? I was telling you about that. I think so. Hit me again. So Explain. not not too long ago, I was featured in a show in London uh, along the likes of like Keith Haring and some other huge artists. That's and I was I was in this show because my friend um, Adrian had rediscovered a portfolio of digital work he'd made at the advent of digital imaging using a machine called the Quantel Paintbox. Oh yes, Quantel was a company out of England that is since no more. And uh, they produced this machine, which was, you know, back in the day, a computer, especially a professional computer, wasn't like a computer with special software on it. Like the whole machine was just purpose built for one thing. And this was built for basically a proto Photoshop. So you could actually do like you could put in photos, you could do motion graphics, you right. could just draw on it. And one of the mm. the most well known music videos is Dire Straits. Yeah, Dire Straits <clears throat> used it. Uh, um, but to like for that. any like old magic scenes in the eighties, and you would shoot like Ooh, magic. Yeah, yeah, you would probably the the weird like also it, that's Quantel. The that's Quantel. um the dollar on the cover for Nirvana's Nevermind, where the right. baby's like chasing the dollar in the pool. And there's a lot of controversy on that one. Yeah, because he know keeps that. on suing. He keeps going back and forth. He's like, I'm I honored. I hate you. I'm honored. I'm violated. I'm honored. I you know. I yeah, know. make up your mind, bro. That was a racy album cover. Uh, but they put that uh, the dollar on there with the Quanto paint box. So that was one of the last Holy commercial shit. uses of it, I think. That was one of the last big things that was made with it. That Look up out. the Quantel. It is an awesome machine. Yeah. You will become obsessed with it. Adrian Wilson just did a presentation at the Computer Arts Museum in, uh, in London with this thing. Uh, I got a little bit of work done on it. Uh, it's a really cool thing. It's the history, you know, get to kind of know where you came from. Yeah. I was, re I was really shocked when I was using it about how similar it was to like Photoshop. And like how, how much did that I machine cost at that time? Like $800,000. Uh, yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Now you can grab one for a couple thousand dollars if you can find a working one. I think Adrian has like two of the last working ones in North America. And yeah. Just they're sent very to difficult to find, right? You yeah. can't. Right. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Adrian's a really cool guy. He's a. Great artist as well, does a lot of street art and stuff, and he has just an incredible collection at his house. He saved all of these stamps from a fire uh, in London, in a factory fire, and they're like fabric stamps. So he's just got these racks of these amazing intricate fabric stamps from like the 1800s. That's so cool. And he opened a store in Ludlow that was a free store, you couldn't buy anything, and you would go in there and just use those stamps to make a shirt. Oh, you were telling me, that's yeah. wild. And then that shirt was how you would pay for the shirt you're taking. Those were the days. Yeah, that was called the Antilius Retailer. It was on Ludlow when Ludlow Street was cool before uh, Louis Vuitton and, and per, uh, Serafina got there. Yeah, and COVID. Yeah, and COVID, of course. Oh. I mean, I, I say that, but really, like, Ludlow was already kind of bouged out. Like, Connor just held on for, like, ten, five years too long on right. Ludlow. And where, you know? where, what was the uh, address for Con Artist? 117 one, one, Ludlow Street. Right. Which is funny and also kind of serendipitous. And now I work at Solis Studio, which is 117 24th Street. That is that is wacky. What's there now? Uh, a nail salon. Uh, a very very. They really did the space. They made it nice. It's. I want to go and see if the backyard's still all fucked up and. Maybe me up. and you should just go get our nails done there. All right, let's go. You know what? You okay. know what? We have we're a minute. Canceled. We're, we're yeah, done with this show. We're done with the show. We're gonna go get I our need nails my done. Nails done. Let's Goodbye. get a manicure. Let's get the hell out of here. All right, let's Brandon. go check it out. I have no time for this show anymore. <laughs> my nails look like Thank this. Thank you for watching. We'll be back on Friday, and next week we'll have um Alex and some other guests. <laughs> see you later. Thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Watch the video edition on Patreon. A green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York, helping artists make cool shit since 2016.